I'm James Spann. It's the Weather Extreme video. This is for Tuesday, the 21st. Little light rain falling in spots this morning, but later in the week, just maybe some severe weather issues here. So plenty of things to talk about. Uh, let's go right to some of the uh, Skycam shots early this morning around the network. And by the way, I should mention, uh, we'll probably move this week's storm alert show Thursday night due to severe weather. And again, we'll uh, talk about that uh, later today once a decision is made. Uh, this is the uh, Jasper Sky Cam in Walker County. It's cloudy, and uh, a few spots have seen some rain. In fact, look at the uh, Haleyville Sky Cam. It's raining up there at 5 o'clock. A pretty good little rain shower. But that is the exception rather than the rule. Most places are dry. And uh, there's the uh, Chiha Sky Cam. Off in the distance, you can see the lights of Munford. All right, uh, got a pretty powerful little shortwave passing north of here, but it's weakening. It produced some uh, strong storms yesterday afternoon over Oklahoma and even into Arkansas, but uh, there's just not much left. In fact, that's the radar at 503. And there's that rain falling over Winston and parts of Fayette and Walker counties, and uh, that's about it. So we'll maintain the chance of a shower this morning, but I think uh, most of the day will be dry. In fact, the sun should break out at times this afternoon. Temperatures around the nation. I got a tongue of warmer air coming up through the Mississippi River Valley. And we are going to warm up in the days ahead, and we should be in the 70s by Thursday. A little spring like action here. Watch warning map around the nation. A little unsettled in the northwest with high wind and winter storm issues, and still some snow falling over Minnesota with the same impulse that's producing a little light rain across our state this morning. Now, this is interesting. Tomorrow, uh, there is. Uh, a 5% chance of severe weather over North Alabama, the Tennessee Valley, and that would be tomorrow afternoon and tomorrow evening, mainly due to this next impulse that might produce some thunder and maybe some hail within that, and that's not the big deal. This is the big deal. This is the day three convective outlook, uh, valid from 6 a.m. Thursday until 6 a.m. Friday, and the big issue would be Thursday night into early Friday morning. And, of course, on a day three, you're just going to get the standard slight risk, but you do get the probabilities, and that tells a story. We've got the crosshatch out there, but for a large part of uh, North Alabama and Central Alabama, pretty good part of Mississippi back into Louisiana, and that is an enhanced risk. And, uh, obviously, if some of the parameters we see continue, uh, that might be a candidate for a moderate risk uh, uh, as we get closer to Thursday night, so... And again, we'll, we'll talk about that in more detail in just a moment. And this is the overall rain for the next five days, valid through Saturday evening at 6 o'clock. And this is suggesting about one inch here. And of course, that would be mainly with the event uh, Thursday night into early Friday morning. All right, uh, this is the 06C GFS, the global forecast system, at noon today, aloft. And this is at uh, the mandatory level of 500 millibars, about 18,000 feet up. You can see energy passing way north of us. And again, that could squeeze out a little bit of light rain in spots this morning, as we've seen. And I think the sun breaks out at times this afternoon. Highs today should be in the mid-60s as we start to warm up. All right, tomorrow, see the next impulse swinging down through Memphis in the mid-south. And again, I think we need to insert the chance of a shower or storm mainly late tomorrow uh, with that feature. And it looks like we'll be in the uh, low 70s. So today and tomorrow, yes, there could be some rain, but nothing really widespread. Maybe a strong storm tomorrow evening, but the main risk would be hail, mainly over the Tennessee Valley. Now, Thursday, we, we've got the energy that is over uh, the Gulf of California and northern stream energy over the Plain States. And the idea is that those will be phasing up west of the state Thursday night. In fact, there's Thursday night at midnight still uh, the, the southern system is kind of left out, but you can see how that long wave trough is beginning to carve out. And down below that, Thursday at midday, we're dry. And, and I do think the day Thursday will be dry and, and not bad, kind of breezy, warm. Uh, I think we get up in the mid-70s, a very balmy day. Then Thursday night at midnight, here comes a cold front. You can see uh, showers and thunderstorms moving in here. We'll go to the NAM at the same time, and it's more aggressive, and it has been with the the uh, chance of thunderstorms, there's a 988 millibar low that is northeast of Detroit. And uh, we'll look at some of the severe weather parameters. First off, this is the surface-based instability valid at midnight Friday night local time. And uh, this is suggesting the instability will be a little over 500 joules. We've, we've seen other runs that have shown higher instability values, in fact, over 1,000 uh, joules. Uh, 
But still, that is certainly sufficient for a cold season system to produce severe weather. Uh, this is coming off the uh, NAM at 6 o'clock Thursday evening. And this is the EHI, the Energy Helicity Index. And boy, anything over a 1 is very significant. And that thing's got a 3.04 uh, over North Mississippi. And needless to say, that's uh, those numbers get to your attention. And this is the uh, one that everybody's been watching. This is the uh, STP, the Significant Tornado Parameter, valid at 6 o'clock Thursday evening. And, uh, boy, those numbers exceed 5 over North Mississippi and even uh, over parts of Northwest Alabama. But the deal is, you know, we're probably going to be capped with an inversion. And with the lid on, uh, things ought to be just quiet as a mouse. And then when things start to go, they could get severe in a hurry if this is right. And this is the Craven Brooks Severe Weather Index. And this is basically a combination of uh, uh, shear and instability. And again, the numbers are extremely high over the Mississippi Delta Thursday evening at 6 o'clock. Uh, based on the latest model runs, I would say the main window for severe weather for this part of Alabama, the north central part, may be 9 o'clock Thursday evening until 6 a.m. Friday. And that could change. You know, we're still a few days out in, in, in the Timing clearly could change, but uh, again, Thursday night could be pretty rough around here. So it will be a night where I think all modes of severe weather will be possible. Large hail, damaging straight line winds, and maybe a few isolated tornadoes. Uh, so at this early phase of the game, we'll just kind of leave it at that, and we can be much more specific and adjust the timing as we get closer. But just for now, make your plans to be you know, Thursday night in a position to hear warnings. And if one happens at 2, 3, 4 a.m., can you hear it? Uh, a weather radio that's programmed properly with a battery backup. The battery's fresh. And you know the drill. If you're watching this video, you're in the loop. You know, the, the ones we worry about are the ones that, you know, don't pay really close attention to the weather. All right, uh, this is Friday. <clears throat> you can see the trough uh, carving out. Still got that southern stream system that's not been picked up yet. And down below that, at noon, the showers and storms are south of here. So uh, these runs are clearly slower than recent runs, keeping the rain in through at least part of the morning on Friday. We should turn colder on Friday, with highs dropping back in the 50s. Saturday, as we start the weekend, should be a nice day with a sunny sky, bright sunny weather. Uh, probably mid to upper 50s, which is about where we should be for this time of the year. And Sunday looks good, mostly sunny with a high in the low and mid-60s. We note that system way north of us. And here's Monday, got a pretty fast zonal flow. And you can see moisture increasing on Monday with a cold front coming in with that feature way up north. But this run not looking very wet. And then Tuesday, the front's going to bog down as it's parallel to the upper air flow. And that suggests maybe a chance of showers over South Alabama. But obviously, confidence in a specific solution early next week is not all that high since we've seen different looks from different runs. We'll check the end of the forecast on March 4th. Positive tilt trough to the west and showers and storms look likely. And then this is the end of this forecast on the 7th of March. It's the battle between that big upper high to the south. Can you say summer? And then to the north, we've got the uh, westerlies. And down below that, that would be very mild. And again, no evidence of any major long-lasting cold air intrusion for the next 15 days on these runs. That's it for the Weather Extreme video today. We'll have notes on the blog. The next video by 3.30 or so today. And if you live around here, we invite you to watch us on television this evening, ABC 3340 in Birmingham at 4, 5, 6, and 10. Thanks for watching. Have a great day and God bless. The first thing you've got to understand, you cannot rely on an outdoor siren. You cannot hear those inside a home, a building, a church. It won't work. You've got to get something inside your house. That's a weather radio or maybe a smartphone app. We work with a company that's developed a wonderful weather radio app for Android phones and iPhones. It knows where you are, and if you're in a tornado warning polygon, you get the warning. And if you're not, you don't. It's an effective device, and it's a great way to be sure you get the warning.